Welcome to our new episode. Our new series begins uh, today. And it's a beautiful, beautiful theme. I love it. Inside Out. It'll go on for a month or more. And uh, today's uh, topic in particular, the sermon, was It Is Written. And uh, It Is Written is an awesome, awesome uh, quotation that Jesus gave. So my name's Adam Jaffer and uh, my good friend here, John Del Morris, uh, will be bringing the webisode to you today and uh, some fresh thoughts around It Is Written. So today's, today's message, uh, we, have, we covered three points in particular. Uh, the Word of God discovers us on the inside out. So John, perhaps you just open that up there. How does the word discover, discover us on the inside out? How, what do you think that sort of takes us to? Yeah, well, I, I liken it to like um, when there's something wrong with you inside out, when you go to a doctor, like from the outside, you might seem fine, but they x-ray you and do an MRI and something like that. And, and that tells you if there's something wrong from the inside. Yep. So the word of God is, is what we need on the inside to, to bring out any, anything that might not be right with us. So. It's that, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, you know, you're talking about diagnostic tools. Yes. You know, MRIs and scans or x-rays or whatever it may take. Uh, so there's diagnostic tools. And I, I just think this is incredible that God would speak about his word as being a diagnostic tool to evaluate yeah. what is happening on the inside. Finds out where, yeah. where we're hurting or yeah. where we're not right. Where we're not right. Yeah. yeah. I thought that's incredible. It's uh, in Hebrews 4, 4, 13. And, uh, or, or actually 12, uh, it talks about the Word of God. You know, it's, it's the living, it's, uh, the actual Word is alive, it's living, it's got power to make changes in our lives, sharper than any two-edged sword, uh, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit. We, we'd looked at what the soul is, the mind, the will and the, and the emotions versus our spirit man who lives in this body. And, uh, and the dividing of the piercing even of the joints and the marrow, quite an incredible discussion about the anatomy of the human life, but it's also a discerner of our thoughts. It, the Word of God will work out. It's a living thing. It's actually analyzing how you think, why you think, what, you, what you're transparent about, maybe what you're hiding in your life, and the intents of the heart. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in there for, for our first point. Mm. You know, the Word of God looking at us and discerning our thoughts, you know. Uh, I think maybe we'll just open the discussion a bit about his, the Word discerns our thoughts. Now, thoughts you think are very private, but he's actually analysing quite openly and clearly your thought processes. Yeah, and um, our thought processes probably... Are not right all the time so again it, it's like another diagnostic tool i see it is the lord's word finds well it, it gives us something to work with and it, it, it's a tool that we use to to fix our thoughts and to fix our our feelings up that when, when we're not right we can read the word and it'll tell you it'll 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 reinforce what you need to do so Amazing. and the marrow in your bone that's that's the juicy part i find you know that's when you see people eating and that on food shows, they always look for the marrow in the bone. So <laughs> that's, that's where the real crux of the word is, yeah, in the yeah. marrow. <laughs> it's the yeah. sweet part. Well, so that, that word is not only a diagnostic tool. I think we're just sort of saying it's also the medicine. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So it has a couple of facets to it. And uh, it's an unusual thing because there's nothing like the word of God. It's the only book that we know of that's been inspired completely and totally by, the, by God through the Holy Spirit. And 40, about 42 authors, 66 books of the Bible, as we understand it. And it speaks, it's alive, it's speaking. But the, one of the things, we'll come, up, we'll come through it anyway in time to come. Uh, you know, the Word of God in Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 to 17 uh, the topic here, our second point, was that we're equipped for every good work. And for us to be equipped, you know, I don't know about, you know, I went to school. I did my schooling, primary school, high school. I never got beyond high school. I had to go and work on the family farm and what have you. Uh, not that I wanted to. I was supposed to be going to uni, but I didn't. And it all sort of fell in a heap, unfortunately. But I know that going to school, I had to go to school to get equipped just for no normal life. How to, I mean, just the three R's, you know, uh, just, well, reading, uh, you know, writing in particular, reading and writing, you know, and uh, 
mathematics, arithmetic and sciences and all the things that we had to learn, it, it certainly set a foundation. It's a natural, natural world that you have to go to. Mm. But now we're talking about being equipped by the Word of God for our lives. How do you live your life without being equipped by the Word of God? Well, most people aren't equipped and they don't live their lives by the Word of God. So that's going to be a, you know, it's a challenge. But God gave uh, apostles, evangelists, pastors, you know, teachers and prophets. He gave fivefold ministry to equip. All of those ministries are, are there not to uh, showcase themselves, but they're actually there to teach and to demonstrate at the same time the kingdom of God. So that we are not only hear about it, but we see it demonstrate like a prophet would show us how to, he'll teach us about that or she, he or she, uh, but they'll also prophesy act, literally with us. An evangelist will you know, teach us the, the basics of the Word of God and the gospel. What is the gospel? What is the power? But then they would demonstrate by saying, well, there's somebody here has got this condition. Come out, we're going to pray for you and show us and they'll be healed as we're watching. So you, you show while you tell. A, a good friend of ours, uh, Stuart Grimens, a great man of God, uh, sat under his ministry 30 years ago or so and he was always saying, showing is better than telling. Yeah, well, we all learn different ways, don't we, Pastor? We do. Some people can learn um, just by reading. Other people can learn by reading and being shown. I personally, I like to experience, I like to be shown and see by example. You yeah. Know? I can read, but I also like to see those examples, like you give examples of, of things you've seen, and they really sit right in, inside here, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, we all learn differently. So these, the fivefold ministries, I, I think it's, that's what it's for. So everyone gets to learn in a different way. So. I think one of the, I think the misunderstandings is that we think the teacher is the teacher and all the others aren't. They actually, all of them have to teach their gift. Yeah. But the teacher teaches a broad, doc, broad, broad base of doctrine, whereas the other, others are there to teach. They're not just there to be an apostle. Apostle, every apostle in scripture taught the doctrines that Jesus gave them. And uh, quite amazing how, how well they did it. You know, in the book of Acts, uh, in chapter two, it says that they uh, daily, they came around the, 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 work, the apostles' doctrine. So the apostles were teaching the people. I mean, there was no written documents of the New Testament just yet at the very beginning. But so they sat around like this, around, you know, it was two of us here, but they might have had households of 50, 30, 20. Mm. And the apostles were physically, each one of them, except for Judas, obviously, uh, each one of them were in houses every night, every day, teaching the Word of God. So the apostles were teaching. I know prophets teach, evangelists should teach. Uh, some don't, but they should, and so on. The pastor is, if the pastor doesn't teach, well, he's only doing half the job, you know. And teachers, obviously, that's all they do is teach. So it's, a, it's fairly incredible. But the key word of this is equipped. So the key is that the fivefold ministry aren't there to showcase themselves. That's, that's my terms. We're not there for a, a big show. We're not there to showcase or draw attention to the fivefold ministry. But the fivefold ministry is there to equip the body. So that's every single person. Mm. You know? the, can you think of any times that you really felt God was equipping you? Um, well, I, I liken it to um, being a soldier. If you're not equipped with the right gear, you can't go into battle. I, I know there's been a, a couple of times in my life um, where I, I've started to question things and by reading the Word and, and looking at all the Scripture, like you said, you need more than one Scripture. So when you find the two or three that, that point to the problem, that, that's equipping you so you know that that's the right way to go. So, Amen. Yeah, so... Beautiful. Um, yeah, if you don't equip your soldiers properly, so and if they have to go into battle, they won't win the battle. So that's what I like. I've met a number of people who've been in the mil military, and uh, <clears throat> they give them uh, in the old days, older days, it was the SLR, yeah. and uh, they'd give them the SLR uh, as a weapon, and uh, they'd show them how to service the the weapon, literally break it down into small parts and put it all out, lay it all out and they'd learn how to clean it and then start to reassemble the weapon and so on. And they thought that that arrived when they could do that. 
And then the, the real test was, now we're going to put you in a dark room and you know, we're no lights. So in the dark, because you may be called on to do it in the dark to save your life. Mm. And so they may need to dismantle their weapon because it's jammed or something's not right. And so they are then challenged to be able to dismantle, clean and reassemble the weapon in the dark. And there's a timer on you. You can't take six hours. You, know, you might be given 10 minutes and you've got to be able to do it very, very quickly and efficiently, putting things in a relative order in the dark so that you know that even though I can't see, I know that the first thing I can touch is this part and the second part and the reassembling. And then when you've reassembled that, you've actually then got to load the, the weapon with the uh, ammunition and, make, and get it ready for action because that can save your life. That's in a natural world, in, a, in an army, military type situation. But you know what? It, we should be just as the word is proficient with our weapons in the light or the dark. We should be able to use this day and night, 24 hours a day, whether we're on our beds, we're thinking about the Word of God. Uh, we should be able to, you know, really have it in our hearts to be able to function like that. So, so sure of how our weapons work without ever doubting. And uh, we will always be winners because he's a winner. Mm. I think we heard last week's message, you know, he wins, we win. Mm. Well, we do win, but we need to win by being ready and prepared for the action. Yeah. It's funny you say that, Pastor Adam, because I actually did that. You did? That? <laughs> yes. Well, I should have let you say that. With I, shouldn't an SLR. Have, I shouldn't have said that with an SLR. <laughs> yeah. In my, well, in well my, maybe just tell us a little bit about well, it. Well, um, again, it's being equipped, being trained. You have the people that teach you. So, you know, and it's, it's from constantly practicing, you know, reading the word, uh, word is practicing. So uh, learning how to pull your rifle apart and putting it back together is practice. And you're being taught by people that are proficient, that are smart, you know, that are, have done it before and they teach you why you need to do it. So, and you had to do it in that dark room. And, and, and at first it was quite difficult, but as you became more proficient, um, it became very easy. So you could do it at any time. How many times do you think you had to do that in the dark? Oh, it's hard. I can't Just remember. random guess. 100? Oh, probably 50, 50 to 100 times. 50 to 100 times. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Before you became proficient. You wow. Know? Um, and it's, like you said, laying, laying everything out so you can easily grasp it and get it. And it just became second nature. So. I, d I didn't know that. I was, yeah. I was guessing. Yeah, I was laughing while you were saying that. I was that. guessing. <laughs> I was picturing what would it be like. Well, I, I would put things in an order so I could go and find them again. <laughs> yeah, and that's what you do. Well, you, you put them in order. Well, so you well. put the parts, the parts for the, for the trigger mechanism, for instance, the barrel parts. You have them all in that order. So when you've got your eyes shut and you're searching, you know exactly where they are. You can just put it into... You've got the right man for the job <laughs> here today, I tell yeah, you. So. That's excellent. Well, there you go. Uh, third point was the, you know... The letter of the word kills. Kills what? Kills us in the sense that it doesn't kill us physically, but it kills the, 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 the joy, that kills the peace, the love. There's something death about the word without the spirit. The, the, word, the letter of the word kills, but it's the spirit that gives life. Precious Lord. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4 to 6, it says, we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. So we're saying well, we can't do this ourselves. Verse 6, but he who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, because it is a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So we're not made sufficient in the letter the letter is it's the black ink on white paper you can read it but without the holy spirit it's dead or it's death to you it doesn't create life if you are dead what well, you know a person without the holy spirit could read the bible all day long and nothing will happen it will not move in them unless they are open and hungry for the things of god so somewhere there's got to be a heart hunger. You know, I think of that scripture, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they will be filled. So when we're hungering and thirsting, you can only be fulfilled when the Spirit comes on the Word. So that's, I believe that the Spirit, you know, the Spirit gives life to the Word. So anyone out there, you know, reading the Word, you want something from God, invite the Holy Spirit to open up the Word. It's like breaking open a fresh loaf of 
freshly baked bread. Beautiful smell, ready. I can almost Taste, smell it. Tastes good. Ready to, yeah. you know. And that's what the Holy Spirit will do to a dry, you know, it might be it's dry, it's dead, it's molded, it's gone hard. Stale. Well, the Holy Spirit will transform that immediately into fresh, beautiful bread. You ever been involved in baking bread? Uh, yeah. Um, when I was young, my mother and I used to work um, and um, we used to deliver bread from a baker. Wow. And uh, that you could, that's fresh smell, like you said, when you get there at two o'clock in the morning and you could smell that fresh bread, you wanted to break, it open, break, it. break it open yeah. and get your teeth into yeah. it, yeah. you know? So yeah. that, that's what I think they're saying here, yeah. you know? And when you read the word, as you said, the word could be just ink on paper. It, without the Holy Spirit, it, you could read it in a different way too. People read it and interpret it a different way too. So, all the um, cults come out of that. Yeah, so. reading it, interpreting what isn't there, but they without the Holy Spirit yeah. come up with doctrines that don't exist. Yeah, really sad. But this, you know, bread. Uh, I had a bread maker once, and the first loaf of bread. We had a guest speaker in the house, <clears throat> and I read the instructions. And I thought, well, I know roughly how big the loaf is. I said, I'd like a bigger one, you know, just a little bit bigger. So I put in another third of the ingredients. And uh, by the time we woke up in the morning, <laughs> it had spilled over. It had actually, it really, it ruined it permanently. Oh, wow. First loaf of bread, never, never got to the second one. So I realized uh, I made a mistake. I really made, I genuinely made a big mistake. So I said, if I ever have a bread maker again, I'll just put in the right amount of ingredients and I'll have a normal loaf of bread in the morning. Follow the instructions. Follow the instructions, yeah. You know, we look at uh, Jesus. He was tempted uh, three times. We're just going to quickly touch on those things. You know, Satan always said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. Jesus answered that it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Satan actually you know, was trying to quote him, sort of quasi quote uh, from scripture, but he actually was twisting it. Jesus quoted it perfectly and wonderfully. Uh, the quote was out of Deuteronomy 8.3. He said that you shall live only by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And then he went to the second temptation and, uh, you know, he wanted to tempt him, throw yourself down off the pinnacle. But, you know, he quoted scripture for in, from Psalm 91, Satan quoted scripture. This is why it's dead. That's dead. A dead word was never meant to be applied to Jesus jumping off the, the pinnacle. For he shall give his angels charge over you and keep you in all your ways. And in their hands, they shall bear you up. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. He was actually inviting him in a twisted, subtle manner to commit suicide. Mm. Had Jesus jumped. Now we may you know, you might think differently. I, I don't believe he would have survived because no, it wasn't so. the will of God. Mm -hmm. And Satan was drawing him, trying to drag him forward. Tell but Jesus you. answered by the word of God. He said, this is the word that applies to this situation. It's not that scripture. It's thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. You know, have you had situations like that <clears throat> where you felt like, hey, the script, this is one scripture I could hang on to, but actually found that, hey, there's another scripture that says something different. Um, yeah, and when you uh, when you're new to the Bible and that, you you see the one scripture and you'll just focus on it, and th until you learn to to look at all the other <coughs> scriptures, that other point, scriptures. You, point you in the right way, and knowing the Word of God, so Jesus knew what the Bible actually meant and how to reference it, and th that, as you said, the devil was trying to tempt him or lure him and and entice him to do the wrong thing, and Jesus knew that no, this is not the Word of God, this is not what it says. So, um, yeah. Until you learn to know properly and you get advice from pastors and other people uh, and your teachers and, and um, you, you um, really need that. It, it sets you firm in your it foundation. Does. So. The, you know, ultimately these three temptations are just in the categories of lust of the eyes, mm. lust of the flesh and the pride of life. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, if Jesus could be tempted in those three areas, if you do a study of it, you'll find Adam and Eve were tempted in exactly those three areas. Mm. So, he, and they were, you know, for all intents and purposes, scripture says Jesus is a second Adam. Adam was a perfect person in the garden, but he got tested and tempted into three areas of temptation, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And he failed in all three. But in Jesus being a second Adam, Satan is having a go at the second Adam now. So I got the first one. 
If I can get the second one, I'll win. But you know, if the first one can be tempted and fail, Jesus is tempted and succeeds. Do you think for a moment that you will not be tested and I won't be tested in those three areas? Because I can tell you, everyone will be tested. Definitely. Every single person. So, you know, these are challenges for us that we can take it to heart that he's working on the inside out. Mm. It is written. Today's sermon, it is written. So I, I pray that that encourages you. And uh, perhaps, John, you would like to finish off? Well, if we go right back to the start of your message when it talks about marinating in it. Yep. So good, good food has the right marinade. So if, if you put that food in the right marinade, it'll turn out sweet, it'll turn out great. If, if you use the wrong marinade and the wrong food, it doesn't turn out well. Correct. So I think that, that part of, of the message really stuck out with me. Good marinade, good food. So <laughs> Excellent, yeah. yeah. Yeah, marinade, it means you've got to take a bit of time. You cannot marinate in five minutes. <laughs> you need to give, every marinade needs proper timing. Yep. And uh, so we need to marinate in the word. And I say marinate in the spirit. We need to just soak in this stuff. And if you want to walk in the spirit, not fulfill the lust of the flesh, you've got to marinate in the word, marinate in the Holy Spirit, in the presence of God. Praise and worship and glory and honor. Sit in it. Praise God. Sit in it. I like that. It. That's beautiful. Sit in it. Well, thank you for tuning in and uh, listening. I pray that God has already touched you. Uh, this will be being watched in many of our uh, gr small groups called Circles. And uh, be blessed in your circle. Uh, open this word up even further. Take it beyond the Sunday service, beyond this webisode. Open it up and personalize it in your, in your circle. So love you, bless you, and uh, we'll see you again. My name is Adam Jaffa and I'm the Senior Pastor of Royals Church and I'm so glad that you joined us today around the Word of God. We believe that the Word of God in itself is powerful, it's energized and it's effective and it's reaching right into your heart and right into your home. We can't wait for you to join us again real soon.